Here we have a Filthy Dirty Singer or Studio 150. First thing we're going to do before cleaning is get that off. I'm going to do it again so you see how it works. Do not mix this up with the LK150. This is a metal model and it's a bulky. The LK150 is a plastic model and it's a mid-gate. There are screws in the positions you're looking at on each end of the bed. I'm on the underside of the bed. Needles are down now and right over here you can see the gate pegs face down on the table. Be gentle. There's padding to protect everything from bending. And there's one more screw over here that you don't get a very good view of that I'm releasing right now. And there it is. I'll set that aside in my tray. And I'm going down to the other end to do the same thing. On the way, we'll pass this. I may not need to loosen anything here because it looks like this case just slides on over the foot. So I'm going to the other end. I'll repeat what you just saw me do. Here are some more screws that need to come out. And Jack has warned me. Get this where you can see it a little better. Inside this end cap, when we remove it, there are nut plates. Those accept the screws and make them work. And when you release these screws and take off the end, the nut plates tend to jump off and head for parts unknown. So he has warned me to make sure that I keep track of them. Here we go, releasing. That's what he's talking about. Those create the threads. This will need washing, but we will do it with something other than the soaking bath. Really, the plastic parts on a machine, I find, respond very well to washing in gentle hand dishwashing soap. I have Dawn to get grease off, so I may do that. Okay, I'm headed down to the other end to do the same thing. You'll use the screwdriver that works best for you, of course, but this is a look at what's working for me on this machine. Ends are off, and I'm able to flex the case. At this point, I've got to assess what else has to come off. And when I flex, this seems to be holding the metal case on, so off it comes. Now you can see I'm free in the back. But I'm not yet free in the front. Sometimes one has to remove the screws in the case under the handle, and sometimes not. Looks like this time we do. To get to that screw, I've got to reach through an opening on the handle. This one looks as though it has a washer with it, unless it's this kind of screw that's just made that way. Yep, it is. But if it was a separate washer, I would need to keep up with the washer, too. And another one over here I'll take care of. Not sure yet whether these need to come out, but it's looking as though at least some of these do. So I will go down the bed, removing them and gently flexing. So as to determine when the casing is free. Screws around all the way across the back. And now I can feel a certain amount of freedom, but it still seems to be pinned. So it looks like more of what secures the handle and possibly the latches have to come off. Now, I want to point something out. I'll be on the lookout when I get inside. I think I felt the presence in these holes of those nut plates, which will have now fallen off in there or possibly be stuck to the metal. And I want to retrieve them all for safekeeping. If you've ever found a small rectangle of metal inside your machine and not known what it was, it is possible that that's what it was. And you can get the machine back together without it 
but the thickness of this metal cowling is not enough to make a really secure set of threads to receive those screws. And that's the purpose of those plates. So it is better to have them. The latches seem to have two screws going into the housing. And it does seem to go all the way through the to the mechanism. So they need to come out as well. And what would I do if any of these screws didn't want to come out? I would put a drop of croil on it and let it sit for hours. Croil doesn't release immediately. It's a creeping oil. But usually after that, here we go, you can back the screw out. Off to the other latch to, for the same treatment. And it's starting to separate as soon as I got it. Those latch screws out, here it came. And look what fell out as expected. Three of them did. The third one is presently under the machine, and there should be a fourth in there somewhere. So I need to set them aside. In order to release this, which was, here's the bed. This was under the bed. This edge was tucked right back here. When everything was unscrewed, it took a little rotational movement, and then it slid right off. Now, this is why we do the deep clean. Even when you run your um, round rat tail brush in, it cannot get to this area and clean all that out. It would be a lot better for it to be gone. This is a very old machine. It's probably 40 years old. It's been used heavily, I know for a fact. I don't know its whole history. So when you consider that, this amount of cred buildup is not particularly bad. I'm happy to see very little rust. Of course, this is not a functioning part of the machine, but it's still symptomatic of what's gone on in the machine's life. So. This is just basically painted sheet metal, and I will clean it with that in mind. This came from the back in this area and helped hold everything together. And when we go to reassemble, I'm going to get Jack to help me with that. I did not get to observe exactly how it was oriented, and he probably knows. So... We'll ask him to help realign that. Now we're looking at the part of the machine we're accustomed to seeing. Let's look at the remainder. Not bad. In here I can see some fiber. That's not unusual. And a little bit of rust right in there. I'm not positive. Aha, you can see it. So we want to get that kind of thing off, if at all possible. We want to get all the fiber and any old grease off. These are the feet, and I'm going to undo these screws so as to pull the rubber part off, because I'll be soaking in Marvel Mystery Oil, which isn't especially good for rubbery parts. It is, however, really good for reconditioning old metal. I'll go ahead and leave the needles in or take them out and drop them in next to it. I haven't decided. But it's good for the needles and it's good for the old metal parts. What I do not use mystery oil for is lubrication while operating the machine. It's a great cleaner and conditioner, but I want it all back out to operate the machine. I had to switch to a bigger screwdriver for this. The mystery oil that I'll be soaking in is good for conditioning old metal and good for cleaning, but it is not a good machine lubricant in my experience. I don't care for its performance that way. So after we've used it for what we want, the cleaning and conditioning, we will then remove all traces of it and put in a lubricant that we do like. These can be set aside and washed in dishwashing soap 
Whenever I say dishwashing soap, I mean hand dishwashing soap. I do not use a dishwasher for this at all. There's a good piece of fuzz. And this machine, just a little side note, that is the sponge bar. And actually, it's been knitting okay. This old 150 is such an uncomplaining workhorse. I knew the bar wasn't good, but it should be about twice this puffy. And this is just such a great machine. Just about ready. One last thing. I want to get this off. may even treat myself to a new one, but it certainly will at least get a washing. I have decided to remove all of the needles because then it will be easier for me to scrub the needles up good and also clean the channels that they ride in once the soak is complete. Although it's incredibly helpful, the soak is not the whole job. You must hand clean to finish the job. You're looking at the naked machine upside down and I'm just showing it to you because it's a view you rarely get in case you've wondered what's going on inside a basic machine. There it is. Not a lot, but it's very sturdy and very dirty and we will take care of the dirt and then enjoy the sturdiness. It's because of this simple design that the deep soak is a safe and good idea. If you were unable to release any electronic components from the machine, you would not want to do it unless you were extremely expert. Technically, the electronics can be rescued and prevented from shorting by enough proper cleaning afterwards, but that is not generally a do-it-yourself project. Before we go in the bath, I'm doing a little obvious cleaning. See how nice that is? It wasn't until I got that stuff off. And this area still needs the same treatment. Toothbrush to the rescue. If you're not equipped to do a deep soak of the entire bed, or don't want to, because it's going to take a month, you could continue, as I am, with a toothbrush, with a solvent that was safe for the metal and rags, and manually clean everything. The cleaning has begun one way or another. We're going to keep working away at it till all the dinginess is gone, all the black stuff, all the grease, any rust has been scrubbed off and treated, and then we'll reassemble. Here's the sinker plate. I actually have two carriages for this machine. You're looking at the singer, but one of them's labeled Studio, and it's exactly the same. And I treated myself to one new sinker plate. So you can see that these brushes are in excellent condition. The metal is nearly new. And all I'm going to do is what you see me doing. Go through and get the fuzz out of them and do a little hand cleaning and wiping up. This sinker plate doesn't need more. Because everything is in such nice new condition, you can clearly see the magnets and where they're located. And if you watch my screwdriver can see how incredibly strong they are. So if you're missing a magnet on one of these, if you get some strange performance, it could be a missing magnet, and that's where they are. And that little housing is screwing down and holding them. We need to get the dial off, and on this type of machine, it usually is go all the way past 10 and lift. When you are reassembling, obviously you have to put it back the same way. And there are some refinements that make it possible to get that dial misaligned. And it will never really work predictably if you do. So we'll be careful when we reassemble. It would seem as though this should wiggle out now, but it won't. Next, we need to get these screws out of the handle. Hard for you to get a good look. That came out of there. It's an odd-looking bird. These look teeny, but this cross-point screwdriver did the job. Now I'll do the other one for you. All right. Right there is where that little screw resides. And that's going to cause the handle to release, which we have to do to get the casing off of the carriage.
There you go. And I'm going to turn this so you can see how it was fitted on there. All right, these are the screws that need to come out. And Jack says the trick is that they're almost always the gold ones. The others will be chrome colored. Well, it's coming. I'm being fussy because I don't want to drop it into the works. The corresponding one is over here. And we're free. Since everything is now loose, keep a good grip on everything while you flip it over. Now I'm going to do this for you with my less than expert hands so you can see what it will be like in real life, not for people with 40 years of mechanical experience. This now wiggles loose. Let's see that spring. It's in the way. So I've got to press it back simultaneously with wiggling. Be gentle. Take as many tries as it takes and off the whole thing comes. Lifting off and now we are down to the area that needs cleaning that we can't usually clean. In this case I see, let me get my trusty toothbrush, there's some debris here that should go. There's a little bit of dingy yellow grease build up, not near as much as there can be at times. Though you could scrub this whole area out with an appropriate solvent and a clean toothbrush. And also under here, at the same time checking that all the flippers and springs operated perfectly. That one does not. See, it should snap back like this one does. So I'll need to give that some attention. Since it can be made to snap back, I'm thinking that there's crud under here. And that's one of the reasons that I favor this deep soaking method. <clears throat> it will help work that crud out and allow me to manually clean it away. Um, this is the foot. This is nylon. It will not be harmed by the soak. It may be discolored somewhat. Usually they're not. But if it turns a little pinkish, that won't ruin my life. And that's the only thing on here that is not metal. So we're ready for deep cleaning. Do remember, however, when you're selecting your own solvents, that you've got multiple kinds of metal here. There's no possible way for me to predict if your choice of cleaner is safe for all those things. But every manufacturer must publish an MSDS safety sheet. Most of them now put it online, and that's where you can discover these things. In every flipper that could should flip back to position, what you're looking for is for it to do so with pep and alacrity. Failure to do so can cause slip stitches, skip stitches, jams, other mishaps, and it can be hard to spot because the function is basically correct. And in many, many cases, the trouble is that the post that holds that flipper down where I'm pointing in this case has an impediment, the impediment usually being crud. So that's what we want to clean out. This is pretty grungy, but we don't soak it because it's plastic. Okay, you're looking at the soaking bin. Homemade dust cover, very humble. Old aquarium from the thrift store, full of our favorite soak Marvel mystery oil. Jack is getting the machine, and he's going to slide it on in. 
all of these large aquariums, which you can get at the thrift store pretty inexpensively, have a center bar to support the mechanism. And here's how we get it right down in there. And now you can see the reddish color. There you go, rub a dub dub, guys. Here are all the needles. They need cleaning too. Here's our trusty Temptations box. Everybody needs these. But it has holes in the bottom, so it's a sieve. And we're going to load the needles into it. And in they go. They'll be easy to get out that way. We won't have to fish around. And if you'll notice, they're all under the level of the oil and the holes in the bottom of the container lets the oil flow over them right. easily. But the container edge is above the oil so we don't have to get filthy. Yes. So you know, there's the work table. This is one of those easily obtained folding plastic work tables and the tank fits right underneath.